It's day two of Overwatch 2's launch, and uh, the issues persist, ladies and gentlemen. We learned that a DDoS attack has put a strain on their servers, which is in part why you're probably having a hard time getting into the game, on top of the fact that so many people are trying to get into the game that we're seeing queues in the tens of thousands. Aaron Keller further kind of clarified what's going on and assured that you know, Blizzard is working on this. We're steadily making progress on server issues and stability, as well as working through a second DDoS attack, as if the first one wasn't bad enough. We're all hands on deck, and we'll continue to work through the night. Thank you for your patience. We'll share more information as it becomes available. Beyond that, Blizzard took to the official forums to detail known launch issues, including some players are experiencing server disconnects, and some players who merge their PC and console accounts are seeing an unexpected server error. Beyond that, earlier today, we did get an update from the European Overwatch Twitter page, which tweeted, we're currently working on server issues and stability. We'd like to thank you for your patience and encourage you to check out uh, this uh, customer support uh, Blizzard page to stay up to date on the situation. So clearly server issues and stability is a worldwide issue. It's not just confined to any one region, which is why you're seeing queues in the 30,000s, in the 40,000s in this case, as noted by this viral tweet with already over 100,000 likes or even 50,000 if you're unlucky enough. You've got people posting memes like this, Overwatch 2 release alongside an image of a major traffic jam. On Reddit, you'll find viral posts like this one with almost 20,000 upvotes that reads, Overwatch 2 has a subtitle revealed on the game login screen, Overwatch 2, unexpected server error occurred. And there are plenty of videos out there of not just people being unable to log in because queues are so long or because of server issues, but also people being disconnected mid game because of a lack of stability so right here we have a clip of somebody who is in the middle of a match and then boom disconnected just like that here we have another reddit user who highlighted something similar they're in the middle of a match and boom just like that this has been the experience for a significant portion of the current overwatch 2 player base same thing here this individual waited in queue for 90 minutes only to get booted out of the game mid-match like so so, yeah, just a very unfortunate situation all around. This comes in not long after Blizzard's controversial decision to lock new heroes behind Battle Pass, which has caused fans to revolt. With some of the top posts this last month, including memes like this, say no to heroes being locked behind the Battle Pass. This has garnered almost 30,000 upvotes. And the reasoning that Blizzard provided for this was met with scorn. Heroes are locked behind the Battle Pass because they're the single most engaging content. Instead of letting the gameplay be what keeps people engaged it's got to be the chase for a new hero that's vital to the gameplay environment and competitive nature of this game. Overwatch's game director also insisted that this isn't a big deal because most players don't swap heroes and instead play only a small number of ones they're familiar with, except not long after it was announced that Overwatch 2 would encourage swapping heroes mid-match by allowing players to keep 30% of their ultimate charge when swapping from one hero to another. This further reinforces Overwatch's key gameplay element of allowing players to swap heroes mid-match so that they can counterpick against opponents' picks. So forcing players to grind to unlock a new hero or forcing them to pay to skip their way towards unlocking a new hero just goes counter to that gameplay philosophy. Now, one thing that I kind of brushed off in my last video that I didn't realize what a big issue it was, was this SMS Protect implementation that was meant to add an additional layer of security on top of the first time user experience, which basically forces completely new players who have never played Overwatch 1 to go through this process of unlocking the original heroes and the myriad game modes in the game. Not only will this help new players get acclimated with the game so they know what they're doing when they are in matches, it's also meant to protect from disruptive players who make new accounts to continue, you know, cheating or to continue just behaving in egregious ways in the game. And an added layer of security on top of that is this SMS protect feature that requires you to input a phone number for your Blizzard account in order to be able to play Overwatch 2. And you can only have one number attached to a Battle.net account. And because the same phone number cannot be used on multiple accounts at the same time, this further prevents disruptive players from creating new accounts and continuing their disruption, essentially. But a key thing to note is that certain types of numbers, including prepaid and VOIP, cannot be used for SMS Protect. And what this does is lock out quite a significant number of players from the game. People who don't use your usual, you know, Verizon or T-Mobile or AT&T or whatever. People who use prepaid phone plans 
are essentially screwed out of the game, are locked out of the game. We're already seeing prominent streamers like Jack Saint highlight this in a tweet that went viral with currently over 41,000 upvotes, almost 42,000 upvotes. Blizzard isn't letting people play Overwatch 2 if they have a prepaid phone plan. Attached to the tweet are images of people who've expressed concern about this or who have experience being locked out of the game because of this implementation. I've been using a Walmart prepaid plan for five years and now I won't be able to play Overwatch 2, says this one Reddit user. And then the next image is a post from another Reddit user who really feels screwed over by this. I'm ashamed of having a prepaid phone. I have Cricket Wireless. It's what my family can afford. I don't know what else to say. I'm not going to tell my family that we should switch because of a video game. Now I can't play Overwatch. I'm really sad about this. I've been playing with friends and family for years. Now I can't play with any of them because of my phone plan. I'm really upset and oddly ashamed for not meeting this standard. Never thought I would be disqualified from playing Overwatch based on my ability to afford a phone contract. But here we are. Blizzard is the first company to make me feel too poor to play a game. Which kind of makes this meme that much more relevant. Can I be a hero just like you? Ew, no, you're too poor. And keep in mind that Blizzard has decided to kill off Overwatch 1 in order to make way for Overwatch 2. So folks with prepaid phone plans who cannot access Overwatch 2 can't just go back to Overwatch 1 and enjoy that game. They're locked out of Overwatch completely. Add on top of that the DDoS situation and the server issues, and we're looking at a scenario where plenty of people who are looking forward to playing this game or who straight up paid for this game feel like the rug was pulled from under them. As highlighted here by Twitter user Bowie, Overwatch 2 requires your phone number, but only players with postpaid plans are allowed to play the game. Then, for the lucky few that did get in, couldn't even play because of major DDoS attack crippling the game on launch day. Even if you waited hours and got into the game, chances are that you might have been kicked out shortly thereafter, forcing you to wait a few more hours. Alongside the tweet, Bowie posted images of people complaining about the SMS protect limitations with Brian here saying, I can't play Overwatch 2 with the phone number I've had for 10 plus years with uh, Cricket, WTF Blizzard. And you can see right here when uh, he tried to insert his phone number where it is requested. It reads right here, please enter a postpaid phone number. And so this guy's stuck in a situation where he's just unable to play Overwatch, period, simply because of his choice of phone company and simply for choosing a phone plan that is more affordable. Here's one more from Nate. The new FN phone number for Overwatch 2 makes it so you got to put in a postpaid number like Verizon, T-Mobile and such. But because I use Cricket, I physically can't play Overwatch 2. What the actual F? Why is it like that? This Reddit user is going through something similar. He's finding out on day one of Overwatch 2's launch that I cannot log in because my seven-year-old phone number is not post-paid. I've auto-paid my bill with my carrier for the last seven years and never changed my number. Phone plans are crazy expensive without going to a family plan, and I never have that third person to make it a fair bill. And so this user is asking, what am I supposed to do, Blizzard? Change my phone plan, change my carrier, and get something more expensive just to play your game, Blizzard? He says, I'm not swapping my phone carrier for you, so I effing hope you take this shit off. I've never had an issue with my phone number being used for anything until today. Banks, schools, doctor appointments, Uber, games, Steam, absolutely nothing except Overwatch 2. And then scrolling down here, some people are saying that it was a third-party provider that Blizzard contracted in order to implement this whole SMS Protect feature, so you may not be able to contact Blizzard directly to have them resolve this. Here's one more Reddit user highlighting just how prominent prepaid phones are in countries around the world. Let's discuss not allowing prepaid phones. Many individuals across the world, i.e. especially in low economic areas, use prepaid phone plans. Many providers, such as Metro PCS, use only prepaid plans. Now you're telling me I cannot play a game that I purchased back in 2016 because of my phone plan? Referring to the fact that this user purchased Overwatch 1. Overwatch 1 is shut down. People are being forced to transfer over to Overwatch 2, except Overwatch 2 has new requirements that will limit certain people like those with prepaid phone plans from accessing it. And so essentially, 
they feel like they've been pushed out of the game that they bought and the sequel that they were forced to transition to. The Reddit user continues, that's pretty demoralizing and honestly, it's very oppressive that you need to worry about your financial status just to play a freaking video game that's supposed to distract you from real world occurrences. Now, scrolling down through this comment section, you'll find that some folks who have Metro are not having trouble logging into Overwatch 2. My girlfriend has Metro and her phone's been linked to Blizzard for about two years. She has no no problem playing other than waiting for four hours to get in. Some people are speculating that maybe because she added that phone number before requirements for phone numbers changed in the last couple of years, that may be why she's fine. But then there are other folks who are like, is this an only US problem? My phone number is prepaid and I've had no problems. Mexico, by the way, same here from Argentina. Now here's somebody from Denmark who is having trouble. I have an originally prepaid phone number, then transferred to another carrier and made postpaid for the last five years and can't get in. Some people are saying that it might have to do with specific carriers with Cricket and Metro PCS not using a form of SMS that every other carrier does. Now, I don't have the expertise to tell you exactly why this might be the case, but New Salad Kotaku details here in their report surrounding issues that people have been having with SMS Protect that prepaid phone users in other countries have reported being able to log into the game problem free. It could be either because their country necessitates identification in order to purchase a prepaid phone or because Blizzard has only banned known prepaid phone plans and a Reddit user adding to that commented, this is why the system isn't going to stop hackers or smurfs as Blizzard intends. They'll just use a virtual number service that Blizzard doesn't know about. Basically saying that if a disruptive player wants to get around this SMS protect feature, there are ways to do it. So it's not worth the damage that SMS protect is doing in terms of the number of players that are being locked out of the game just because their phone plan doesn't adhere to the exact specifications that Blizzard demands for players to be able to access this game that again is being forced to players of Overwatch 1, a game that didn't have such a requirement. Beyond that, the article extrapolates upon why people might go with a prepaid plan like Richard here, a college student who uses Cricket's $50 monthly plan because if you can't pay it that month, they just shut down the phone instead of taking you to collections. And beyond that, the credit score doesn't get affected. If I get a regular phone plan and then can't pay, my credit score gets destroyed. Plenty of good reasons for why people go pre-planned. Some people just don't feel like they have a choice and Blizzard is punishing these people by making the game inaccessible to them, this is definitely something Blizzard has to look into. Beyond that, we're seeing complaints surrounding Overwatch's overall gameplay feel. Some folks like Brian here are saying it's truly disappointing knowing that Overwatch 2 completely replaced Overwatch 1 entirely. The hit registration feels so awful that I can't even force myself to play the game. Aiming feels so awful it's actually upsetting and I hope the game doesn't remain this way long term. And there's a streamer, by the way, who posted this. Another streamer chimed in by saying that the sound is so scuffed too, guns are too loud, and sounds of a lot lot of weapons sound very similar. The visuals are so effing bad sometimes I can't even tell if the person I'm fighting is getting healed when you receive damage, etc. You can't really tell when you're low HP, etc. Brian responded with, I literally can't tell where damage or healing is even coming from to half the time. It feels like the game is spray and pray RNG. Now I wish I could give you my own feedback based on my own experiences with Overwatch 2 as I played a decent amount of Overwatch 1 but I haven't been able to log in, so whoops. While I don't know how universal the gameplay complaints are, there are a decent amount of streamers and players who have spoken out. Gale here, for example, tweeted, pretty disappointed with the launch of Overwatch 2, not gonna lie. The same hit registration and floaty aim issues that the beta had are still there somehow, which is really bad. The connectivity problems definitely sucked too although that was due to DDoS, of course. Some people are just putting it much more simply, like the following Twitter user who posted, anyone else feel like their aim is just off in Overwatch 2? Doesn't something feel not quite right with the way this game feels to play and control and to aim and to shoot and to move around, so on and so forth? Even on Reddit, you'll find people wondering if, is it just me or does Overwatch 2 feel kind of weird? This individual complains about everything from aiming to looking to moving to just like everything feeling kind of off and not in a good way. Though some folks are saying that this might have to do with certain specific graphic settings that are making the game feel a little more sluggish than it should. So right here is a user who said that all my display settings are reset and I also had to turn the FPS limiter off. Also had to turn Nvidia boost back on as well. 
As soon as I did that, the game felt great. Another user said that he saw somebody on Twitter saying that it was the dynamic render scale setting that might be messing with that. Here's one more user who said that after tweaking some graphic setting, it feels pretty much the same as Overwatch 1 to me, other than direct gameplay changes. Here's one more for good measure. Someone mentioned in graphics quality, turning high quality sampling to AMD FSR and changing the slider below it to zero helps. So these are some suggestions for those out there who may potentially be experiencing this issue where aiming and moving and all these things feels kind of floaty and just slightly sluggish and a little off. Maybe these uh, potential suggestions will help. Again, I wish I could tell you for a certain one way or another, but I can't log into the game. I, it's just impossible to play right now. So I'm going to wait a few days and try again sometime. Moving past all that, you've got some more ancillary, albeit still very relevant complaints, like the fact that the new hero bios, according to this Reddit user, feel amateurish, just feel a lot less detailed, a lot less thorough than what Overwatch 1 offered. It feels like a step back from Overwatch 1's bios, which shouldn't be the case for a sequel. A sequel should be expanding upon the foundation of the original game or of the previous entry. And what this game does is strip a lot of information away in regards to characters. And so there's this whole, essentially, little mini essay about all that, explaining all this. And plenty of people seem to agree about this. And then last but not least, we've got folks who are already complaining about Overwatch 2's monetization systems. And I'm sure more of that will unfold over time and will get much more detailed explanations as to whether this is reasonable or not. But so far, we're seeing people highlighting things like how the total price of all Overwatch 1 cosmetics, if you were to purchase them, would be over $12,000. Now, for those who did play Overwatch 1 and got all the cosmetics there, all that stuff does transfer over. But for someone like me, for example, who kind of was on and off with Overwatch and didn't get all the cosmetics, yeah, it looks like uh, my only way to obtaining some of my desired Overwatch 1 cosmetics is by shelling out thousands of dollars. And maybe some of these can be unlocked via gameplay, but the grind, no doubt, will be uh, insufferable enough to uh, try to motivate me and encourage me to just spend the money. Especially if this Reddit post is any indication, is this a joke? I have to grind eight months for one legendary skin in the shop? And this is based off of the weekly challenges and how few coins they give per completed challenge. And this response put it very aptly, the kind of manipulation that this aims to engage in. No, they expect you to see this, get frustrated and say, fuck it, and shell out $20 for the skin. That's the whole point of a grind wall. Make it intolerable enough that people will throw up their hands in frustration and just decide that shelling out the money is much less painful than going through the grind. Plenty of people pointing out how egregious it is that Blizzard is charging so much money and engaging in such sort of heavy monetization systems with old assets, with uh, skins that were there in the first game. And throughout the Overwatch subreddit, you'll find plenty of people expressing their grievances about Overwatch going free to play and how that has negatively impacted the way the game gives out rewards. Heroes being locked behind battle passes bad enough, but at least in Overwatch 1, despite its loot box implementation, there were gameplay paths towards obtaining the most desired cosmetics and the like. With Overwatch 2, everything feels a lot more paywalled, a lot less gameplay accessible. A lot of stuff feels like you pretty much have to shell out money to get. Whereas in Overwatch 1, at least with enough time, you could eventually obtain all the things you wanted to obtain. With the one major caveat being the implementation of loot box RNG that encouraged people to pay to gamble instead of just grinding to gamble. The grind wall was still there to incentivize people to spend the money instead of going through insufferable grind and all these things. With Overwatch 2, while they have gotten rid of the loot boxes, while they have gotten rid of the gambling, the current battle pass implementation, the rewards give out rate and things like that um, are currently not seemingly very satisfactory based on the feedback that I'm seeing from those who have been able to play the game. Here's one more saying how dissatisfied they are with Overwatch 2 and its free to play model and the measly 60 coins per week. Basically, despite the fact that the monetization system itself is less egregious because it's less gambling focused, the rewards loop itself just feels a lot more skewed against players, a lot stingier. And so uh, there are plenty of complaints surrounding that. Again, I'm sure we'll get more details surrounding monetization as the days and months go by. And that's when we can really gauge what's going on here. But 
at the very least, first impressions of Overwatch 2's monetization are not good at all. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at on day two of Overwatch 2's launch. DDoS attacks that perpetuate server issues, inability to log in, ridiculous queues, complaints surrounding heroes being locked behind the battle pass, complaints surrounding just the monetization in general and the stingy rewards give out, aspects of the game like character bios and, according to some testimonials, the gameplay feeling inferior in some regards, though again tweaking graphic settings may resolve that issue, and this whole situation of the SMS protect feature that requires you to have a phone number to play Overwatch 2 locking people out who have prepaid plans who prefer to go with more affordable phone options. It's just an amalgam of some of the worst issues that a new live service, a newly launched multiplayer online game like this could experience. Not a great look for Blizzard, given that they're well known at this point for their track record of game releases that launch with severe connectivity issues and with enough problems that people essentially feel like they're really not getting the game on day one are not really able to play the game properly on day one and have to wait a few more days a few more weeks hopefully things can be smoothed out in a timely manner sooner rather than later for now though this is everything you need to know about the woe surrounding overwatch 2's launch let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on overwatch 2 have you managed to play it do you have any takes about what you've played thus far if you've been lucky enough to be able to get into the game and not have to wait through ridiculous cues as much as some. Share your thoughts in the comments below and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.